What's up? It's your boy Fast checking in with you with another one. Gangs is just like a culture thing in a prison because if you don't follow their rules and regulations, you might find yourself getting violated and getting treated bad because you did something wrong. Because like I said, all gangs in the penitentiary got codes and regulations that they have to follow in order for them to be in them gangs. And if you ain't following them rules and regulations, you might find yourself getting violated for something. I mean, you got like the Christians. I mean, Christians is a gang up in there too. I mean, they can get real, real down and dirty about their business as well. So you got to be real careful of stuff like that. I mean, they get involved in all type of stuff. I mean, you might have somebody in a, in a uh, Christian group that might be, you know, into them boys. So, like I said, you have to be real careful of certain things like that because most people, you know, they don't look at them things like that as anything bad. They just look at it as a survival thing while they're in the penitentiary if they're messing with somebody like that. I mean, the Christians, you know, they they kind of tight too. They they got a little group that's going on with them. You Probably. might have some Christians that sell drugs, some that might extort you, some that carry around with them things, you know. I mean, it's just all type of stuff that can go on. Just because they Christian doesn't mean that they ain't there to protect themselves as well because you got to think about it. If they got other gangs that's trying to do something to them, what you think they going to, how do you think they going to protect themselves when it comes to other people? So like I said, you know, you got to be real careful with certain things like that, you know, especially with gangs and stuff. So when the Christians come at you, I mean, they come at you in a kind of different way. You know, maybe they want to come at you to try to clear something up. They might want to come at you and see if you can get on a page as they, like I said, they want to be Christians. I mean, it just depends on how they want to handle their business. But they try, they, they kind of try to handle it peaceful as in love because they don't really want that type of violence going on in their community. So, like I said, when you join them gangs and stuff like that, there's all type of things that you have to really be careful about. But most of the Christians that, 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 that's in the penitentiary, they real peaceful. You know, they don't really want to, uh, kick nothing off or anything like that. They really kind of stay to themselves and stay to the word and things like that. They more of God fearing people than anything, because like I said, they'll help you out a lot. If you get on the right page with them, I mean, they'll look out for you, make sure that you do your time peaceful. I mean, they ain't going to hound you about nothing. I mean, they real cool when it comes to certain things. But then you have, like, the Crips. I mean, the Crips got, like, five different type of sets up in there. They got, like, the Hoovers. They got, like, the Neighborhoods. They got the Avalons. They got the Three Ones. I mean, they got so many different gangs in there that they recruiting people out. There's anybody. They don't care if you snitching. They don't care if you got bad blood or whatever. I mean, they they trying to get on to build their numbers up. So so that if they had to go to war, they have enough people to kind of back everything up. I mean, the Crips is kind of dangerous up in there because, like I said, it's so many of them, so many different sets, but most of them don't really get along with each other. I mean, they be kind of beefing with each other back and forth. It's just depending on the situation, whatever going on up in there with them. But, yeah, the Crips, you know, they'll recruit anybody just to get the numbers so that way, you know, if they like I said, if they happen to go to war or whatever, they have enough numbers to kind of back up what they kind of do. I mean, they get involved in all type of stuff, too, as well. They got the drug trade going on. I mean, they extort you if they have to. I mean, they'll do all type of stuff just to prove their point that they running something in front of somebody to where. I mean, you ain't got no choice but to accept what's going on with them. I mean, they also mess with them boys, too, as well. You know, you got some of them, some of them uh, big dogs, you know, kind of mess with them boys, too. But, shit, they ain't going to let you know that they do that. But, shit, some of them do do that. Then you got, like, the Bloods. I mean, they got only, like, the Pyrus and the Inglewoods and the 27th Street, you know, Bloods. I mean, they kind of deep up in there, but they ain't really deep like the Crips is, but they kind of deep. I mean, they do the same thing as well. They mess with them boys, too. You know, they also sell drugs. They run around, you know, storing people. I mean, they do all type of crazy-ass shit, too, to where they can kind of, you know, get their point across to other people, too. But, yeah, then you got, like, the, you know, the ABs. 
but we call them hammers in Kansas because they kind of changed it up because they didn't want people to actually know that they was the Aaron Brotherhood, so they changed their names to the hammers, which is they like Vikings and stuff like that. I mean, they do all type of crazy shit as well. I mean, they sell drugs, they extort people. I mean, all the gangs do all type of crazy ass shit, you know, to where you wish that you never even got involved in things like that. But yeah, the Aaron Brotherhood is just like one of the biggest gangs up in there in the penitentiary because, I mean, who who you think they running with? They running with the white people. So therefore, you know, when the white people doing something, they got their back on everything. I mean, the hammers control everything. All the movement that goes on in the penitentiary from all the details and stuff like that, that's who runs it is the hammers. They do all the uh, maintenance work. They do all the plumbing work. They do all the painting. I mean, they do all the construction and stuff around there. They change all the light bulbs and all that stuff. So they basically all over the motherfucking penitentiary doing their thing to, to where they kind of know what's going on with everybody around there because they kind of talk to everybody when they go to the cell houses and stuff like that. But yeah, then you got like the GDs. I mean, the GDs is kind of deep too. But they ain't deep like the Christians and the, uh, the Crips, but they kind of deep. But they ain't big. Like I said, they ain't that big and stuff like that. They get involved with them drugs and extortion and messing with them boys, too. I mean, there's a lot of people in there that, that do some type of funny style stuff to where you wouldn't even know that they're doing it. But in reality, they're doing it. they just doing it in a different way to where none of their people actually see them do it. Then you got like the Vice Lords. I mean, they was kind of cool to me too because I hung with a couple of them, you know. They was real quiet. They wasn't the type that uh, you know, it basically kicked something off because like I said, at this time, it wasn't that many of them at that time. So they would kind of lay back in the cut and wait on the opportunity to come for them to kind of recruit people, initiate them and put them on. But it, it wasn't too many people that was getting involved with them because they was either running to the GDs or the Bloods or maybe, you know what I'm saying, some Crips or something like that. But they wouldn't really run into, like, the Vice Lords and trying to recruit them in the, in the gangs and stuff. And then you had, like, you know, the Wiccans, you know, they was like, you know, like a devil-worshipping group, you know. They were, uh, had the stars and stuff all in their room. You know, you, would think, you, you wouldn't think that they was in that type of stuff, but they was, you know. But yeah, they was kind of, you know, dangerous as well because they didn't they didn't tolerate no motherfucking bullshit either. They would get down and dirty if they had to. But yeah, they mess with them boys too. I mean, all of them mess with them boys, except the Muslims, you know, because the Muslims didn't really play with that. You know, you messing with them boys and stuff like that. They would hurry up and put, violate you and get you up out the group if you mess with them boys. I mean, they'll judge your ass by the Quran. And once, the, once they judge you by the Quran, then after that, it was just a done deal. They either going to whoop your ass or they was going to put something through you or they was just going to uh, put you out the group and let you just defend for yourself with another gang and stuff like that. But, yeah, I remember one time when I went to the yard, when I get to the yard, I'm down at the basketball court watching them play basketball. I ain't really doing nothing too serious. I'm just watching them playing basketball. I ain't over there trying to hustle or nothing like that. I'm just watching them playing basketball. So while I'm sitting there, this dude named Thomas Hill comes over there. Now, Thomas Hill is a Moor. I mean, he's basically like a Muslim, but he ain't. We, he just don't believe in the same prophets as we believe in. So he's sitting there with like three other dudes. Now, Thomas Hill is like a light-skinned dude. He got real long hair. I mean, he's like a real pretty boy dude. I mean, he's the leader of the Moore science. So I kind of already knew him, but I didn't know him like that. So when he come over there, we sitting there talking for a minute, you know, then they get up and they walk off. And when they walk off, you know, I get up and I walk off too. And I go over there where all the other Muslims at. So I'm sitting there talking to them and they telling me, hey, you know, you got to be real careful because something about to go down on the yard. And I was like, all right. So I start walking the track. And when I walk in the track, so when I come back around, that's when I seen the Mexicans over there. You know, they were putting on their gloves and stuff. I don't know what they was getting ready for, but I knew that once the Mexicans put their gloves on, something's about to go down with them because that's how they move. You know, the Mexicans move kind of different. I mean, they didn't like black people at all. They didn't like dealing with us. They didn't like really talking to us. We couldn't do no type of business with them at all. You know, they just wanted it to just be their people. 
So when I seen them, they putting their gloves on and stuff, I said, let's let me go over here to this basketball court, you know, see what's going on. So I go over to the basketball court because that's when everybody finally got on the yard and everybody about to start, you know, running some type of game. So I was going over there, you know, to look at them, you know, run a little basketball game. So uh, when I'm walking by, like I said, I seen the Mexicans, you know what I'm saying, putting their gloves on and stuff. So then I seen like five of them, you know, dip to the side, you know, like they about to go do something. You can tell when somebody about to go do something because the way that they move on the yard. So when they got over there, they start walking, you know what I'm saying, over there to where Thomas was, where the Moors was. So I'm looking, you know, not really paying attention to what's going on. I'm just looking at the way that they moving because, like I said, the Muslim brother told me earlier, you know, to be careful because something was about to go on the yard. So I'm just looking at how people moving on the yard and stuff like that. So uh, they start walking, you know, real fast. And when they start got over there, like where Thomas then was, that's when they, they just start, you know what I'm saying, swinging on each other. Boom, 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 boom. It was like five against three of them. So I'm like, shit, they about to tear this motherfucker up. So they was over there fighting and stuff. And I'm looking at that, you know, like, damn, you know, shit. I'm going to hurry up and sit down. And I'm no, I ain't over there looking at them fighting. I'm just at the, over on the bench looking at them playing basketball, but looking at them also over there fighting as well. So that's when, you know, the police come out there. And when they come out there, they break up the fight and stuff. You know, everybody, you know, they told everybody get on the ground. And, you know, everybody got on the ground. So after they got the yard under control, they let everybody get up and they tell us that we have to go back in because I guess the fight made it to where they had to shut down the yard. So on my way back in, my uh, Muslim brother, Hakeem, he come over to me. He's like, hey, what was you over there talking to Thomas about? And I said, I wasn't talking to him about nothing. We was just, just basically just talking, you know. He said, well, I seen y'all over there talking. He said, you ain't you ain't been doing nothing with them people, have you? And I was like, what you mean? He said, you ain't been over there, you know, getting no drugs or nothing from the people or nothing like that. I was like, nah, I ain't been doing that. I guess Thomas, you know, got something from the Mexicans. I guess he got it from somebody else. And then the Mexicans wanted him to pay. And then Thomas, I guess Thomas didn't have the money to pay him. So... The Mexicans, you know, they just roll down on them, you know, because that's how they do it. If you ain't got the money or anything like that, you know, they're going to roll down on you to make sure that you either get ass whooping for your uh, your money or you have to come off your money or whatever. But I guess Thomas didn't have the money to pay him. So the Mexicans, you know, basically tore his ass up, you know, because uh, he was uh, owed him some money or something like that. But yeah, Hakeem was just telling me, he was like, hey, you got to be, you make sure that you don't get involved in people like that because shit, if you do, we ain't going to be able to have your back on certain things because if you get involved in, in legal stuff to where it makes the community look bad, then you got to, they, they got to make sure that they uh, shun me from the community for at least 30 days or 60 days or whatever, and, I, and I'm on my own for that. So I was like, nah, I ain't getting nothing from him, you know. I ain't do none of that stuff. So he was like, all right. So then uh, we go back in the cell house. And when we get back in the cell house, you know, everybody talking about what happened on the yard and stuff like that. So basically everybody just ear hustling, you know, whatever went on out there and said. So the next morning when I go to breakfast, I sit at the table and Hakeem's like, Hey, you got to make sure that whatever you do from here on out, that you on point with everything, that you don't get involved in none of that type of stuff. Because he, he knew I already knew that what I was doing, but he was just basically telling me that I was on my own if I got caught up in some type of bullshit while I was doing whatever I was doing. So I was like, nah, I ain't going to get caught up in nothing. You know, I'm going to make sure that I'm on point with everything. I'm going to make sure that I deal with the right people. I make. Sure, I'm, I was just basically telling them that I wasn't going to be doing nothing kind of crazy like that. But yeah, you don't want to go to the penitentiary and get involved in stuff like that because most of the time it always ends up bad, you know. I mean, Thomas, Thomas was a good dude, you know. Like I said, he was one of the Muslim brothers, but even though he was in a different religion than us, he was one of the Muslim brothers, you know, and sometimes, you know, we always link up with them, but sometimes we can't because of, of the situation. Because if we are uh, doing something that we ain't supposed to, when it comes to the community, they got to make sure that they you don't get involved in stuff like that. 
But yeah, when Thomas did what he did with the Mexicans, you know, the Muslims kind of already knew about it because I guess the Mexicans came to uh, Hakeem and probably told him about uh, the stuff to make sure that we wasn't going to uh, get caught up with them. So they probably talked to him to make sure that, you know, we everybody was going to be on the up and up page because, like I said, the Muslims was kind of deep then, and the Mexicans, they was kind of average at that time. It was probably about seven or eight of them. It wasn't that many of them. But the Muslims, you know, we was kind of strong. So they wanted to make sure that if something did go down, that uh, none of us was going to be involved in it. If, if if Thomas, you know, did what he did, you know, because, like I said, they was kind of Muslims too, but they wasn't – they was on two different pages. We was on two different pages. But, yeah, you don't want to get yourself involved in situations like that because it always ends up bad, you know. Sometimes you think that most gang members, when they come in there, that they're going to be on your side. But sometimes you got to think about it, you know. You might get yourself in a bad situation to where you might owe somebody. I mean, it could be anything. It could be something small. It don't necessarily always have to be big. It could be something small at that time to where you got yourself in a bad situation to where you end up on somebody. Yeah. But this is your boy Fats and them checking in with you with another. Hit that like and subscribe button for me and leave me a comment if you can. Y'all stay up. Peace. I'm out of here.